Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Kaiser Redux in which we're playing as everyone's favorite Tibet nation, Tibet. Well, depends who you are. So we're playing as Tibet and we're going to try to get Nicholas Rorsch. Rorik? Rorsch. But the Regency and the Tibetan people. In 1936, Tibet is embroiled in a bitter leadership dispute. The 13th Dalai Lama died in 1933, leaving the 5th Rating Rinpoche Jampel Yeshi Galtsen as his regent until a new Dalai Lama can be found. As a leadership struggle unfolded, the Rating Rinpoche was instated as a regent, however. He serves as only a figurehead of the chaotic government. Four main factions have unfolded in the conflict Lungshar's Kayacho Kuntun, the Panchen Lama's Tibet Improvement Party, Tsarong's Young Tibetan, the traditionalists led by Yamfel Yashi Gasultan, and Trimun. The rest of the central government of Tibet, referred to as the Gandong Prodang, is occupied by a collection of appointed officers, both theocratic and civil. The Renpoche are high ranking Buddhist monks who are confirmed by the public to be reincarnations of previous imperial imported monks. The Kashag is a four way council traditionally appointed by civil servants, but after 1933 has been controlled by Marshal Trimon. The Tibetan are feudal landowners that Hold significant sway in the more prosperous eastern half of the Tibetan Kampa, the people of Utsang, while still loyal to the Ganden Fo Darang, are suffering from neglect and bandits when coming out of Xinjiang and Kashmir. We'll persevere. So, to get this guy, we'll send Dobbs Dobbs to the Nepalese border and send Dobbs Dobbs to cut out the tip militias. But, we're led by this guy. Thupten Jopel Yashi Gai Sultan, and I apologize for butchering all these words, nobleman, friend of the 13th Dalai Lama and the region of Tibet, the 5th Rating Rinpoche presided over a tumultuous period in Tibetan history, one that saw numerous exiles, tortures, and heavy reliance on the commander in chief, Trimon, to stay in power. The Rating Rinpoche stood behind the Trimon's continuation of their tax increases, and stands the most legitimate leader of Tibet until the 14th Dalai Lama is found. The Rating Rinpoche continues to hold the Ganden Fodrong steady, confident that his friend the Dalai Lama would be ruined by submission to foreign tutelage, whether from the British Indians, Chinese, or Hui Muslims. But we're going to conve convene the Kashag. So I'm going to refer to the protocols of the ordinance for the more effective governing of Tibet once more. Uh, here, here in the Kashag, uh, which is not met since the region appointed Trimon must reconvene to set a course for political action to direct the Gandan Frodang, or Frodang. Young Tibet party leaves Lhasa. After being demoted, General Tsarong Tsaza has been a thorn in the fifth Rating's Rinpoche side. Tsarong Tsaza has been agitating and Lhasa to escalate our diplomatic relations with the British in Delhi, even as their powers waned following the syndicalist revolution. Thankfully, Tsarong Tsaza and his young Tibet party didn't support the blind Lung Shar, who made his revolutionary intentions known in calm, deserving of his blindness. We may need to blind Tsaza as well. Oh boy. I guess we have army reform, but we don't really have that. We have a struggle for Tibet. At the moment, Tibet's government is struggling with exiled revolutionaries and reformers competing for control of the country. This has inhibited the Gandan Fodrang's ability to govern the Tibetan people and increased the disconnect between the average Tibetan freemen with serfs and nobility. The Tibet Improvement Party spotted in Shigatse. Shigatse. Rumors circulating among the Dobbs Dobbs that visiting the Gandan Fodrang allege that the Nepalese border has seen an increase in tax resistance. This can only mean one thing that the 9th Panchen Lama is plotting against the Regency again. The Panchen Lama was exiled a decade ago for resisting the 13th Dalai Lama's tax collection, and his domain in Shigitse was rapidly seized by the Gandan Fo Drang to pay back taxes. Until the Panchen's name appeared in the copies of the Three Principles of the, people in the, of the Peoples in Tibet, it was assumed that the Panchen Lama was still involved or still living in Mongolia. Same guards the Nepalese border. Um, we can do this one. I like civvies. Expand the Trapichi factory. The Trapichi factory are sole modern military factories in need of funding in order to supply a larger military force. We must order the Trapichi monks to clear land for additional assembly buildings. The Trapichi quartermaster will have to train and lead an increase in production than he promised us years ago. Cool. We also have monastic governance. Much of the Tibetan countryside has compromised of monastic fiefs. These areas are quite autonomous from the Tibetan government and operate as states unto their own, having their own armies and tax collection services. What makes for a weaker central government, the self reliant communities offer a degree of stability and community. The 5th Rating Rinpoche grapples with refugees. The region. The 5th Rating Rinpoche has publicly re reiterated his promise to protect West Zhikang from the Sichuan clique. The people of West Zhikang are so grateful to the Gandan Fo Drang for liberating them from Chinese imperialism. The 5th Rating Rinpoche also spoke of how they should continue to protect the Golok people, but they already spoke of avenging the loss inflicted by them by the Xinghai army. But keep it safe. Dobbs Dobbs tradition, the main form of peacekeeping in the countryside are the Dobbs Dobbs, where are monks recruited by the monasteries of protected holdings. While often uneducated compared to their peers, they tend to be extremely conservative and dedicated to protecting what they see as dharmic uh, institutions. The Dobbs Dobbs now receive a stipend from the Gandan Fo Drang to ensure they can feed their families during wartime. The young Tibet party arrived in Utsang. 
Puerto General Tarong Tazas and Sidious YTP have made a fresh set of her promises to the people of Utsang. The young Tibet uh, party is apparently promised the peasants liberation from banditry should Tarong Tazas be elevated to a regent. The young Tibetans are not shy of claiming a new region and the demotion of our most esteemed Thurmon will allow Tibet to modernize faster. We all continue to independence for Tibet, to the right guidance of Thurmon and the fifth resting Rinpoche, both of whom are deeply offended by Tsarong's politicking. This is nearly seditious speech. Institutionalized serfdom. Serfdom is so practiced about Tibet, and many peasants are so permanently tied to their lands. Despite being assailed politically from the south and east, an alternative has not gained traction with, it, with the population. So we send Dob Dobbs in a police border, and send Dobbs Dobbs to cut off the militias. Uh, the Tibet improvement caught entering through the Nepalese border. Nepalese monks have reported being accosted by the radical Thubatans on the border regions of Nepal. What distinguishes the Thubatans, or Thubatans, Thubtans, is their promotion of Indian socialist and Sunyat Sen rhetoric. Surely these radicals are the rumored Tibet Improvement Party, an easily transparent Indian plot to overthrow the Andan Fo Drang and bring in atheistic socialism. Although these mounds paths are out of our jurisdiction to intervene, the Gandan Fo Drang can lead on the Nepalese government to help disperse these socialist agitators. Nepal wouldn't help socialists, would they? Of course they wouldn't. Totally not. So we just gotta send Dobbs Dobbs to cut them off uh, the militias. Which hopefully we don't have to do too much. Um, can we use steel? Oh, we can use the spot of steel, yeah. With the army in shape. I don't mind more army XP, but exploiting Utsang resources. Now, we can now allocate some government funding to hand out expo exploratory land grants to Utsang resources. These grants should be also extended to foreign prospectors for the only reason that foreigners can be sucked dry by Tibetan tax collectors more easily. Nepal refuses to close their border. The Tibet Improvement Party has continued to grow in the border regions of Nepal and sees that it's grown bold enough to finally cross into Tibet. We cannot mobilize the Mogsgar out of the last in time, but the Dobbs Dobbs can be deployed in time to counter the rebels. The Dobbs Dobbs can even be sent to hunt the uh, uh, Tibet Improvement. Uh, militants in Kham province or to try to stem the flow of perpetrators coming in through Nepal. Marshal Turmon believes the hunt for Kampa allies will shock the Tibet improvement into retreating once more. While his understudy, General Chongra, believes a direct assault along the Nepalese border is both necessary and illegally justified. Uh, we want to send him to the border, don't we? No. Send Dobbs Dobbs to the Nepalese border. And send Dobbs Dobbs to cut them off. Send him to the border and cut off the militias. Uh, Mongol envoy arrives. Our fellow Buddhists from beyond the Muslim lands in Mongolia have sent a diplomatic envoy. Is he cooperation and unity between our groups? How should we report? Welcome, unity for historical Tibet. Rebel people politely refuse. Not sure. Oh god, we're gonna get involved, aren't we? Uh, crud. Improvement militia defeats Dab Dabs. The militia of the Tibet Improvement Party reportedly ambushed Dab Dabs patrolling in Kham and has taken some of them prisoners. <clears throat> Well, in this victory, the Tibet Improvement Party, along the side of the militia horde, appears to be carving a path towards Sichuan. Monks in Gandan Pradong believe they can stop the Tibet's improvement charge by pressuring all loyal Tibetans to ostracize the rebels, while Tamon believes Dab Dabs and Kam could defeat them if ordered to. Boy, Dab Dab. Then breaks out in Sichuan. Now they're at the coup. Complete their turn to the Penchen Lama focus. Nice. So, we make it good or not, you never know, you know? Are we losing stability at all? No, we're doing okay. I'm gonna start working on some more army XP. Nga Wong Tobye. Hey, they take Lhasa. Uh oh. On a quiet morning, General Tremont was inspecting a guard post outside of Lhasa. Suddenly, without warning, General Tremont was fired upon from the plains. Too slow to raise the alarm, General Tremont was shot dead outside of Lhasa, the most important victory that day of the Tibet Improvement Party, which was able to overrun the city by the next evening. The Rating Rinpoche is now justly impressed in the Gandam Fo Drang under watchful occupation. Our country is free. Look at this guy, the ninth Panchen Lama. He was uh, born Choki Nima into the Thubten class of Shikutse Tibet. Raised and educated by the prestigious Tashi Lumpo Monastery, the young Choki Nima was predestined to be the great scholar until under the Dalai Lama and was for a time well respected by the Gandam Fo Drang. As a young scholar of the 9th Panchen Lama met with a radical um, uh, Yama Afghan, Durzi, who taught him the prayer to Shambhala. This prayer was intended to collect the allies of Buddhism together to the center of the world in the fictional city of Shambhala. Political realities came in 1924 when the 13th Dalai Lama was modernizing his army. The Dalai Lama demanded more taxation from the Panchen Lama as part of his feudal, feudal duties. The Panchen Lama refused. 
The Dalai Lama cut off the Taishi Otashi Lunpo Monastery and confiscated the Panchen Lama's property. The resulting conflict forced the Panchen Lama to flee Tibet to Mongolia in 1924. The Panchen Lama, seeing Mongolia is unable to aid in his return under Baron Ungern, left for Baratia in 1931. Ambaratia. The Panchen Lama connected with the other exiled Tibetan nobles, uh, Pan Datsong, Rapga, and Tubtin Konfela. These two exiles had connections in common, had aligned themselves with the exiled KMT generals to form the Tibet Improvement Party. The Panchen Lama, seeing no other way to return to Tibet save for an invasion, joined the Tibet Improvement Party and began publishing commentaries of Sun Yat-sen's Three Principles of the People. The storm of the revolution saw that the Panchen Lama promised to preserve the existence of the God and Fo Drang while removing their ability to choose the Kashog. Cool! Hey, look at this. So who do we have here now? Oh. End of the division. Twelve combat with, huh? Because we have four militia divisions, which I hate. And two of these guys, which is 12 combat with, with... Oh, two are cavalry. Okay. Alright, and we're trying to build some cities up here. Corner Cor of Storms, okay. Oh, and we like no stability. Hey, stability's going up, though, which is nice. Because we're uh, social democrats right now. Like I said, I do want some army XP if possible. That's different. 0.12, huh? Attack and defense of core territory, breakthrough. Ooh, I'm not sure which one I want. Breakthrough or speed? Max entrenchment. Hmm. I want. You know what? I want to get speed just because I never choose speed. I want that one. It seems that the Zili collapse would cause the Xinhai governor governorship to grow impatient with the frequent raiding by Tibetan nomads in the region. Claiming that we are in fact funded by raiders in order to claim the Yushu Township for ourselves, the Mods have denounced our government. Even though we do in fact have no connection with the recent raiding, they have all the audacity, audacity to commit an action such as this. Obviously we cannot leave this matter alone, if we're already, already being blamed for the raiding, perhaps we could actually establish a connection with the raiders in order to increase their strength, and maybe even gain control of Yushu or for ourselves. If they want to fight, they'll get one. Return of the Panchen Lama. The ninth Panchen Lama, the friend of the 13th Dalai Lama, has returned to Tibet. With them comes Chinese KMT and Bharat revolutionaries. Those influences on the Panchen Lama region were surely pushed a Gandhi Fo Drang towards the democratic fundamentals that both the Bharat and the KMT share. Cool. In an election about four months after complete the focus in which one of the options would be with the Sacred Union Party under Nicolas Laroche. They're international. France has gone through international. If you want to do this one, please go ahead. Oh, sure, why not? The region's vision. Sitting on the shores of the Lake Lamo La Tso Lake, the region has a vision of the new Dalai Lama through a low through a large monastery with a gilded roof and turquoise tiles and a twisting path from it. The vision took the region to a hill to the east. Opposite to the hill, stood a small house with a distinctive eaves. The eaves of this house were distinctive. Uh, a house is in Amdo. The vision ends and the region awakens to alert the lamas of the journey. A journey to Amdo. The chairman of the committee, you this, please go ahead, preparing for the journey. Despite the intense political disruption of the past few months, the Takhtra Rinpoche has remained loyal to the government. Although the Kwetseng Rinpoche has sequestered himself in calm after refusing to join the Rutting Rinpoche's government in 1932. Once the Kwetseng Rinpoche is added to their team, they must enter the Ma's territory and armed to retrieve the Dalai Lama. The feeding Ma family surely not notice an expedition if it is done quickly, however, waiting for it may bring harm to the next Dalai Lama, just as neutrality before Tremon caused the deaths of thousands of Godlock Tibetans in 1921. Now for the escort. Uh, if you're into this, please go ahead. Uh, the Company of the Lamas. It appears that Ma family few to sell confined primarily to the Qinghai and Ningxia, meaning most of their forces will be preoccupied. Our commander in chief recommended a detachment of elite Ma Mog Scar regulars, which will ensure no Ma patrol can harm the expedition. The region, however, does not recall any military encampment in his vision, and says that a small escort will suffice. A small collection of Lamas in the Gandan Fo Drang. All from Amdo have been professed that no escort will be safer than any escort, as they have been able to visit Amdo in recent years in disguises. The choice ultimately falls to the region. Fast with no escort? Bring a small escort. No less than 2,000 guard. Um. Uh. Well, we don't want to do this. We don't want anyone to die. Yeah. Bigger a present, huh? Guess we could do stability. I'll put it to power. Women's role in the World Art Revolution? Eh. We get weekly stability anyway, so.
No, we have no problems with white terror. And the first congress, that's fine. Party convention. There is no more conventional way for political parties to flourish in Tibet. We'll take inspiration from the Second Republican Revolution and foster a party convention for the Tibet Improvement Party. Dissenting opinion are welcome, and that we're certain the people of Tibet will appreciate the ability to interact with the future leaders. Why not? You know? Oh. Yushu has been a highly contested township between Tibet and the Maz, with the city constantly shifting control ever since the early 30s. While in a status quo for now, both sides are trying to make moves to ensure the town eventually falls under the control. This could ever lead to conflict on an even greater scale than could be expected. Current Yushu attentions are 4. Ma control is 60%. Tibet control is 40%. Go look away, the remaining population in Tibet are itching to eventually a massacre by the Ningxia army. We can employ their help to scout out Ma camps for raids. Increase by 50%. Attention increase. Reinforce the border. While well, the border between Tibet and Xinhai exists in a legal sense, in reality this is hardly the truth. The border is much of Tibetan and Chinese controlled zones competing for control. Reinforcing the legitimate border should be put pressure uh, on the Ma controlled areas. Revolutionaries announced election in four months. With the creation of the new coalition, a constitution, the Richi Kol Kuntun, the Tibetan Improvement Party, and the Second Union Party is registered to run candidates for the upcoming election. Already posters for various candidates have started to pop up in Lhasa and other major cities. Much ado is being made of the three candidates, especially the opposition leaders Nicholas Ororsh and Lung Shar. Lung Shar's detractors still claim the aristocrat plotted to sell Tibet to foreigners. Like was the foreign born Rorsh. Ororsh's status as a candidate in the Tibetan elections is shaky, but it's seeing strong support from Tibetans living in exile from Bharatiya. Borshi for Russia's supporters, the Indian revolutionary militias have protected him and ensured his safety in Lhasa. Good luck, everybody! Any more guns, huh? There you go. Dual education? Centuries long traditions of exclusively male aristocratic or education is the front of our beliefs. We must find a solution that allows for free education at some level to the common Tibetan at the same time. Even if it must be segregated, girls should receive some form of education provided by the civil government. Ruling party, non ruling party. Um, gives us more weakness to be able to do like. Earth output and political power. I don't. Uh, I'll put consumer goods. What do I want her consumer goods? Could improve working conditions. We're in isolation still, which really sucks. This is different too from what I'm normally used to. Artillery. Special forces, speed. Use more population too. Oh, recovery rate though, that's really important. Organization and recovery rate? Yeah. I love you. Did I have to choose them now? Honestly, probably not. I could have done something better. My bad. Should have realized that. Oh well. Ma Biao position in Yushu. Ma Biao is known for his renowned beating of forces in the Sichuan Tibetan War in 1930. Has been repositioned in Qinghai. Oh, look at that. Uh, by the Jining government. We can only guess that they want to reestablish fear in our forces by assigning the very man who beat them previously in front of them, but it's only bold in our resolve. We will, however, need to find ways to bypass the astonished defense of Biao if we want to continue raiding the town. We won't be defeated. Kyushu Kuntun promises moderation. Kyushu Kuntun promises if elected, they will reopen the Gandam Fo Drang and empower the Zongdu Gaizenzong. The Zongdu Gaizenzong consists of abbots and ex abbots of the three biggest Galupa monasteries. It also separate the secular government from the Gandan Fo Drang, allowing them to represent us diplomatically. Supporters of the Kyushu you know, Kyushu also claim that the incumbent Tibet Improvement Party is detrimental to Tibet through the dependence on the Chinese KMT at the same time. The Kyushu Kuntun denounces the Secret Union Party as a front for liberation or Indian socialism to impose itself on Tibet. All forgiving on Lung Shar. what? I want cavalry divisions. I'll be honest, I really do. Like, just straight calves. Oh, regular cavalry. This is used as organization. Defense is 2021 for a regular. Three more soft attack. Not as much. Same hard attack. Three suppression, two suppression. HP. More, more HP. 
Gives you less organization, though. I'm not sure which one I like more. Because you do this, it gives you more planes, attack, and defense, a bonus. Interesting. Gives you more HP. Way more HP. Better recovery rate. Um, it requires the same amount, and its combat width, its training time actually goes up. So... Oh yeah, I'm just going to choose this normal one, probably. Because what's the point of using this? I just rather have faster divisions, in all honesty. Train. Go from there. So, we get more political power here, stability, war sport, uh, production efficiency growth, more construction speed, treaty of modifiers. All right, that's all good stuff. Pensions, loyalty, mixed economy. Local teachers, it's not bad, but still. More development, and more building slots, which is okay, not great. Mm, that's not bad either. Point of treasure, political power is good. Artillery reduction of military, Tibet military reform. China to reinforce the border. Seems the Maw authority of the North is just put pressure on the legal Qinghai border with a small amount of guards. Well, this is more a show of force than an actual action. The presence of these guards will make it significantly more difficult to send raiders to attack Yushu. Too bad we are unable to raid for 30 days, alright. Tibet Improvement promises Sun Yat-sen thought. The Tibet Improvement Party promises that if they're elected to invest in the Khan province, moreover, they shall promise uh, to reform the education system to allow for women to be educated. The pledge to follow the three principles of the people of Dr. Sun Yat-sen in recent speeches. The Tibet Improvement has to fend off accusations that they are a front for Chinese interests in Tibet. TFP Chairman, Thubten uh, Konfala, I was responded by making massive donations of his wealth to come to the poor service he helped emancipate. This is good stuff. Ooh, that's good to do, but we don't really have that. That would be good to do, too. Protect the nation. Whip the army into shape. For too long, the Tibetan armies have languished under training and unaccounted for. The first task of our military staff is to review and assemble the whole body of our military drill records and evaluate our performance scores the British inspectors gave us back in 1919. Why not? What's this? What's this one? Here more guns. Yeah, we do. Oh, that was fast. Second Union promises Lama Lamaist socialism. Second Union Party promises that they're elect, uh, elected to bring about Buddhist socialism, explain that Buddhist values are socialist values. They promise land reform to collectivize agriculture to preserve that material culture to Tibet. They've also announced that they'll seek to improve their relations with the Bharatiya commune. The directors plan the Second Union, which is for the eventual subjugation to Tibet through the Bharatian commune, and strongly really object to the foreign intrusion of theosophy into Tibet. A utopian of them. Nice. I need more war sport too. These guys are killing each other pretty normal. Pretty normal. Nice. Alright, where are we going to end next? Oh, Germany established control of Crimea, huh? Six, see if America falls apart. Probably will. A revolutionary spirit. Look at that. Huh. More workers employed. The Gandam Fold Drong of Tibet is put into place. An employment program uh, for young Tibetans to find temporary employment. The model shown some success in the British Raj. Reinforce the army. Oh, what is this? As the general staff spur to action, and serious. Series of hasty plans have been landed at our office, many of which are obvious copies of the manual training sold in Indian China. 
Nonetheless, I should be able to resupply or rapidly apply the program we choose. Oh god. Sijuan clique mobilizes against us. Grave news, our spies have discovered that Sijuan clique has been mobilizing troops on shore border. War is imminent. Prepare their defenses. To bed elections, elections of uh, 1936. Today is the election for the National Legislature. As per the Constitution, only men can vote, but a certain number have come out to vote for who shall be the uh, Sikyong of Tibet. Uh, the Sikyong or as Prime Minister's official title, leadership of the Kashag, which will be awarded to Thabten Konfala, should the TIP remain in Tang power. The Young Tibet Party, despite the opposition of Chimon, was kept off the ballots. The Kashag is of this because of the YTP's leader, Tsarong Tsaza, has too much influence on the pre revolutionary Tibet military. The question is who shall win the election? Syndicalist, huh? Sacred Union Party, huh? Sacred Union Party. Huh. I guess Sacred Union, because. Oh, you guys are actually totalists. I didn't know that. Nicholas Roche. Raised by the aristocratic Roche family in St. Petersburg, Nicholas has expressed interest in both the aesthetic and spiritual side of socialist revolution. The interest laid Nicholas first into the arts, where he graduated from St. Petersburg University and the Imperial Academy of the Arts in 19, or 1897. Nicholas became immersed in Russian avant-garde, which included working with the legendary Igor Stravinsky and Vlasov Nijinsky. The October Revolution ended the social peace that Nicholas had known and sent Nicholas closer to social conservatism and led Orientalism in opposition to Vladimir Lenin. Nicholas Rorsch led to the U.S. and joined the uh, Theosophical Society, a spiritual movement that shared Rorsch's admiration of the undeveloped nations as more spiritually pure than westernized counterparts. Rorsch visited the Commune, or visited the Theosophical, Theosophical Society in both the Bharatiya Commune and the British Dominion in 1930 and had a startling conversation with Gandhi. Gandhi expressed to Rorsch that Vladimir Lenin was not against traditional culture but against corrupt leaders of traditional institutions. Nicholas Rorsch decided to take his family to visit Tibet through the Shimla Mountains and receive a second calling in the mountains. A short while guiding Rorsch remarked, Is it true that Lenin was not against Buddhism? This led to a religious experience in Nicholas, which ended the ex expedition when he spoke of his, this in Lhasa. Nicholas began describing Vladimir Lenin as Mahatma Lenin, and was forced to leave Tibet by the Gandhian full drunk for his heretical idea. Back in Bharatiya, Nicholas was alerted to a possible revolution in Tibet emanating from Sikkim. In Sikkim, Nicholas Rorsch, I hope this is the right Rorik, uh, combined this revelations with an endorsement from Gandhi to form the Sacred Union Party, a revolutionary party dedicated to saving Tibetan Buddhism through esoteric Leninism. Does this reset everything? Oh, oh, we're down here. Rorik's path to Shangri-La. Shambhala of Shangri-La is often seen as a paradise only existing in legends or beyond this realm, but Nicholas Lorosh knows the truth. Shambhala does exist, and his physical entrance is hiding here at the crown of the world, riding past the Panchen Lama and the Tibetan Improvement Party. Nicholas Lorosh, his wife Helen, and his two sons and their allies across the world across Oh crap. Uh, Tibet's clergy will work together to lock the gates of Shambhala to all right here in Tibet, for this paradise does exist, and we will build it. Better put up our research speed? Can someone get output? Um... Learn from the Mahatmas of the East. The Mahatmas and other spiritual elders and Buddhist mystic leaders, but the Himalayas and throughout the time commune to the Rorks is for their job to spread these teachings to the masses. Illiteracy and lack of education shall be a thing of the past. Let's be part of the lessons and wisdoms of the Buddhist masters to all under care and spread the secrets to life everlasting in nirvana through spiritual and faith and academic virtue. Alright, so that's not good. I'm about to replay some of this just because, uh, this is a lot of war. Ji Kong Dab Dab's rise to defend us. During Sichuan's declaration of war in Tibet, fired at the Gelong monasteries at Litera, Ji Kong. The monks of Ji Kong have once again taken up arms to defend their treasures, hoping that the beleaguered Tibetan army can rescue them in time before the beleaguered mass of Shi Zhuang's armies can overwhelm them. Truly, we're grateful for their support. Crap. They busted over. Alright, so we're at war. The rest are civilian. We're gonna get you to move faster. As long as we can hold our line, that's the most important thing here. 
Come on. We'll hold here for now. They want to attack us like crazy, so be it. Uh, we'll join it, but uh, you better win. Because we're not joining it, really. You, uh, be more offensive. So even when you're moving, you'll be fine. Let's see, army, foreign volunteers, protect the nation. Honestly, we could use that right now. The best not recognized by most of the world's an independent nation. We're usually regarded or disregarded as either a British or Chinese puppet. To this outdated and wrong perception shall be rebuked in all forms. To the few forms that may visit the pet, they shall see our national flags front and center. Um, eventually, I do want to do this one, protect the monasteries. The security of the monasteries in Tibet ranges greatly, and the experiences with the Kumbum monastery in Yushu provides they can support a city besieged. If we were to build more dzongs around the monasteries, they would be able to project power more safely, and embrace the Agni Yoga ideal. Agni Yoga, the fiery yoga of living ethics, or the teaching of life gifted to us by the great firebird Agni, is synthesis of all yoga fused with cosmicism. It preaches universalism and cosmic humanitarianism through a pious and mindful existence start with the baptism of fire. It is said that Agni gifted fire to ancient humankind, and as such we must continue this tradition of kindness shared in giving order to bring Italian egalitarian salvation and virtuous, healthy and life, long life to all struggling through existence. The universe and its creation must be protected and cared for throughout the cycle of life and death, and all must be guided towards a healthy and spiritually fulfilled existence. By Moria's ancient wisdom. Master Moria was one of the principal founders of Theosophy, and Horrock's own mentor alongside his wife Helena Horrock and the late Helena Blavatsky, and together they formulated ideas based on the truth whispered to them by the heavens. Amama himself is believed that one day he will reincarnate in order to become the Manu, or progenitor, of a new cosmically enlightened root race of culturally perfect humanity. Until that day, we must live by his words outlined in his text like monsters of the ancient wisdom and work to ensure that his philosophy or ph prophecy is fulfilled and a new Satya Yuga can be ushered in. So with this route, I think we got four, four paths we can take. Uh, Tibet traditionalism, uh, reaffirm loyalty to the Dalai Lama, move the masses of art and faith, walk, walk Lenin's red path to Shambhala. Shambhala. So let me know what you guys think and which route you, we want to take because uh, I'm kind of down for whatever. Of course, it's going to be weird. It's Kaiser Redux. What do you expect? But uh, let me know which path we should take overall in the end. For this right path, for this left path, the middle path. I'm kind of down for whatever you guys want to do. So please let me know in the comments below which way we should go with the pan Asian heart of universalism. I guess we can do all these maybe. Oh no, we can't do all these. Um, the pan Asian heart of universalist perfection. Open the portal of Shambhala to the world. Or should we do a Union for Soviet Shangri La? So if you enjoyed the video though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, as we'll see which path we'll eventually take. Thanks for watching, have a tremendous rest of your day.